Howdy, Scott in Colorado here. Thought I'd share uh, yet another crazy police experience when I was a law enforcement officer. I had been on graveyard, graveyard shift. It was about 2.30 in the morning. The bars had closed about uh, 1.30. And I had been on the west end of town uh, watching traffic out there because there was a uh, hotel with a bar uh, out in that direction. I was coming into town and I noticed a vehicle in front of me, a uh, passenger car, that was traveling about 15 miles an hour under the speed limit. Traveling under the speed limit isn't generally a problem, but at 2.30 in the morning, uh, it is a good indicator of something wrong. I flipped on, I, I watched him he kept on going from left to right. He went over the lane lines, couldn't stay in his lane. There's five lanes to a left, to right, on the right side, and a turning lane in the center. He couldn't keep it in between the lines. So I had a reasonable suspicion that there was a crime in progress, that he was an intoxicated driver, possibly intoxicated. So I hit my overhead lights to pull him over. Uh, he did not pull over but actually slowed down to about 20 miles an hour, even slower, and continued to go on through a, uh, an intersection with a street light. And then he turned south uh, of the main drag in town and to the darker portions of the city. Uh, hit another stop sign, went through that, continued on through very dark streets. And as he's going slowly along, all the, I call it, whistles and bells in my head started, all the alarm bells in my head started going off. I knew something was terribly wrong and that I was going to have a problem. Just based on his behavior, the time of night, and um, from my experience and other things. He, I called to my partner. Uh, on the radio, he was in another squad car, and his name was Dave. I said, Dave, I uh, called him on a different, um, on Channel 3 it was, and uh, you can just talk on there. I said, Dave, get over here fast, told him where I was headed. I'd already told dispatch where I was going. I just told him I needed to back up. It was po possible, 1055, or a deuce, they call him in California. Uh, and I told Dave, I said, get over here quick, wherever you are, because something's not right about this. He's not pulling over. I wasn't going 1080. It wasn't a high-speed chase or anything like that. But he wasn't. He was choosing. He was picking a spot, and I could tell. I could see his head moving left and right, looking for basically the darkest part of town that he could find. He finally pulled off another side street and pulled into the parking lot behind a larger brick building. It happened to be a Masonic Lodge, uh, which is rarely used. And he pulled into this back parking lot. Now, an understanding of the positions of my vehicle and his vehicle are important to an understanding of the events that later occurred. I have made this very technical drawing, and I'll show it to you. This is the Masonic Lodge building down here. We're behind the building. Um, let's see, I need to move it over a little bit. There we go. Okay, this is the Masonic Lodge. This vehicle at the bottom is my vehicle. You can see both doors open in this. And you can see the suspect vehicle up here. This is the parking lot. And you can see that he pulled up. He's canted. So as he open his opens his door, he's going to be immediately facing me. I'm, of course, uh, behind the, the steering wheel of the, of the vehicle, of my police car, down at the bottom. Uh, these little... Guys right here are signifying my spotlights on the left and right that are hand operated from inside the vehicle and they shone uh, here on the suspect. I had turned both of these lights on. In fact, before we even pulled into the, well, just as we pulled into the parking lot, uh, a kind of a long driveway that came down this direction that was paved off of a side street and went into this back lot. There's no exit, exit from here other than the, the way we came. And I believe he knew this. Uh, there's no view from back here. There's lots of shrubberies and trees back here. It's about the darkest place you could possibly pick there in the downtown area. 
as he pulled into the lot, uh, and it came into my mind that was given to me, uh, exactly the tactic that I needed to use to survive this. I reached over, I, I kicked my door loose, I, I, I reached over and uh, it was unlocked and I, I made the door ajar. Then I reached across and I unlocked the door on my, generally you drive around in a squad car with locked doors for safety reasons. I drive my personal vehicle nowadays. As soon as I get in the car, I lock my doors. It's a transitional space. When you go into a stoplight or parking lot, you get in and out of your car. That's called a transitional space. That's the most dangerous uh, place you can be in because you're neither inside or outside. It's, it's difficult to defend yourself when you're sitting in a car with a seatbelt on, especially if the door's unlocked. Anyways, I reached across and unlocked the passenger door. There's nobody else in the vehicle with me. Uh, pushed the door, the door open. I shoved it open. I turned on both spotlights, both left and right. Before the car came to a stop, I could see before both of our vehicles came to a stop, he had pushed his door, his driver door, open and was turning his head to look at me. Before I got my car stopped, I shoved it into park. It was automatic transmission. I shoved it into park and I was still going about seven miles an hour, well, probably four miles an hour. I get at, got out before the car had stopped shoved it in park while it was moving, and you hear the pawl in there in the automatic transmission popping against this, this pawl, this pin that locks it, all right, stops the, stops the wheels for turning. It was popping because it wouldn't engage. Pop, 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 and the, the car jerked forward and then finally slammed, you know, to a stop. I, I was already back around the backside of the vehicle, my vehicle by then. I needed cover immediately. I ran over to the, dry, to the passenger side, and when the door was already open and I got in the wedge of the door and I placed the engine block between of my patrol car between me and the suspect who was getting out of the vehicle. He was halfway out uh, by the time I got over there. Both of my spotlights were on. He's lit up. I've got my high beams on. I've got my overheads turning. Uh, siren isn't on. There's no point in having that on because this wasn't a high-speed chase. All this time while I'm rolling to a stop, I told him, tell Dave where I am. I tell him, get over here quick. Something's not right. Get over here quick as you can. As he got out of his car, uh, he reached back and I can kind of show you the position. He came out and I do this from a seated position and he was facing away from me, of course, because he's back here. And he came out and I saw what looked like blue steel come into his hand and he came up to about this position here. Didn't come up fully on me. And came up to about here, just as that at that point, my partner came around the corner, all right, to come into the parking lot, luckily. At that point, he took this object, blued steel, and he threw it back, and I saw it reflect my lights, and he threw it back onto the seat of his vehicle. I screamed at him to get, get, get his hands out where I could see him. I told him, don't move. I said, put your hands up in the air, don't move. And uh, he complied at that point. And between Dave and I, we got him walked back, got him proned out and on, the, on the asphalt, got him cuffed. He was very obviously intoxicated, a very strong odor of an alcohol beverage on his breath. His eyes were glassy, very slow movement in his eyes. When a person is intoxicated, whether drugs or alcohol, <clears throat> the first thing that is an indicator and that gives it away, well, other than the odor, if it's windy, you don't, you don't smell the odor unless it's blowing in your face. But their eyes, what will happen is, well, if I was to look at you, if you look, watch my eyes, if I turn my head away and you wanted my attention, if I'm sober, my eyes will snap to you and then my head will follow like this. An intoxicated person, what will happen is their head will, will turn first like this, and then their eyes will slowly find you, all right? The eyes operate very slowly. The eyes are part of the brain. The eyes also, the eyeballs take on a glassy, they call that a glassy appearance, kind of like a marble. Something that isn't, it's actually, I believe it is because uh, the alcohol dehydrates, dehydrates us so, so much. 
um, what happens is it, it binds with the um, with the water H2O in our bodies and the surface of our eye becomes very dry and so it's not a crisp um, light doesn't shine off of our eyeballs crisply it's it's a, almost a, a, a flattish or more more of a satin I would call it a satin finish rather than a clear gloss high a good spar varnish all right my eyes are sparkly they're bright and clear right now hopefully I only had two hours sleep maybe not um, but you can tell right away they will do a we, we did a horizontal gaze nystagmus test not astigmatism it's nystagmus so where the eyes has an inability to track smoothly all right and what will happen is the eye will make these jumps boom 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 left to right and they're very sharp I, I can't reproduce it uh once I was intoxicated I've never been there so I don't know anyways uh this test given first and last generally this, the last time we give it is just to verify every all the other tests uh that we've given it just verifies what we already knew from the first nice nystag horizontal gaze nystagmus test that we gave anyways got him in cuffs uh I didn't give him any tests uh I didn't need to at that point uh, I just just his demeanor, his slurred speech, and so forth, uh, his cyclic train of thought and conversation. Uh, I got him. Uh, Dave got him in his squad car, and I. He said he was going to take him over to the jail and start booking. I said, "Great." Um, I said, "I'll be down." Dave was going to give him give him an intoxilizer test, which is a, a breath test in a big twenty thirty thousand dollar machine. Uh, and I did the uh, state tax impound on the vehicle. As Dave, as he got, uh, as Dave got the suspect in his vehicle, and they and they prepared to well, as to the as they drove over to the jail. <coughs> excuse me. The suspect made this remark. He said, "It's a good thing that you showed up when you did and came into the parking lot when you did, because." And Dave said, why? And he says, because I was going to shoot your partner. He says, I knew he was by himself, and I knew exactly where he was. And I found a a uh, 44 Bulldog on the seat, front seat of the car. He had pulled a 44 Bulldog on me. That's a 44 Special. She just a 44 um, slug out of it. It's a little police special kind of uh, snub-nosed revolver. Uh, a large caliber, almost a 45 caliber. He was going to shoot me. And uh, Dave asked him, well, where were you going to shoot? And he says, well, I knew he was right behind the driver's spotlight. Well, guess what? I wasn't behind the driver's spotlight. I was behind the passenger spotlight. I knew where he was going to aim. I knew what was going to happen before it happened. How do I know that? How did I know that? It's because before I went on duty, I would have a prayer. Uh, in the car, I would pray on the way to the PD uh, when I called on duty. And I would pray for my Heavenly Father's protection. And he prompted me of what in, in what to do to stay alive. It's not karma. No, it's uh, not my smartness. Not hardly. Not the sharpest crayon in the pack. But I do know how to listen. And I encourage you to also listen. Because there is somebody around smarter than you. Uh, it might be your mother. Happy Mother's Day. It's your mother's yesterday. Uh, but the one who's smartest is God, and he can help you if you ask for help. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that story. And uh, if you like, subscribe. Uh, comment in the comment section. If you don't like it, uh, please let me know why. And uh, if you do subscribe, click the little bell icon up in the corner. Otherwise, you won't know if I put out a new video. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.